Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to take a simplified look at bacteria. So first things first, what are bacteria? Now a lot of people think that bacteria are not living things because they're not accustomed to um, living things looking like bacteria or behaving like bacteria. Usually when people think about living things, they think about plants or animals and stuff like that. But bacteria are living things. Um, they contain DNA for their genetic information that has instructions for building and maintaining them. Um, so they are living things just like plants and animals. Now some differences, um, these guys are single-celled or one-celled prokaryotes. So if you remember way back to the beginning of the year when we learned about cells, we learned that there were two main categories, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes had no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelle, while eukaryotes, they do have a nucleus and do have membrane-bound organelles. So prokaryotes, not only are they single-celled, where we're accustomed to living things being multicellular, um, they are prokaryotes as well. They don't have a nucleus and they don't have membrane-bound organelles. They're also microscopic, so you can't see bacteria uh, with the naked eye. You need a microscope in order to see them. If you are able to see bacteria with the naked eye, it's usually because there's so many, hundreds of thousands or millions of them growing all together, and there's so many in one place that you could see them. But if you're talking about an individual bacteria, you can't see it with the naked eye. You need a microscope in, a, uh, in order to be able to see them. Bacteria are found everywhere. So bacteria are literally in every environment on our planet. Um, you can find them on every surface as well. So when I say every surface, I literally mean every surface. So your body is covered with bacteria. Um, the bed you sleep in is covered in bacteria. The plates you eat on are co covered with bacteria. Um, there is bacteria everywhere. Um, we even have bacteria inside us, and we'll get to that later on. But bacteria is everywhere. Bacteria are even found in some of the most inhospitable environments on our planet. So if you take a look at the picture down here, um, bacteria are found um, around volcanic vents where the temperatures are so hot that you don't find other living things. But some bacteria, not all bacteria, but some bacteria are actually able to survive in those environments. And this picture here, we're actually taking a look at um, a, um, a vent in Yellowstone National Park. All right, now what do bacteria do? Most of the time when you say bacteria, people think of gross, nasty, disgusting things that are here to make us sick. But that's actually really far from the truth. Um, most bacteria, in fact, we're gonna learn that, most bacteria don't make us sick. Um, there's very few that actually do. Um, so this idea that bacteria are here to make us sick, no, that's not along the right lines. Um, bacteria are actually very, very helpful. In fact, we learned about them towards the beginning of the year. We learned that bacteria are decomposers, and we need decomposers. Um, they help living things um, continue the cycle of life. So uh, when we learned about decomposers, we learned that producers are important um, and that they um, um, bring energy into living things. And decomposers are important as well because they help break down and recycle both nutrients and matter from living things. So that way when something dies, it gets broken apart and those materials and nutrients are able to be used by other living things uh, to create other living things and keep the cycle going. So that's what bacteria are. They're not here to harm us, make them sick. That's not the whole thing about what they're all about. It's um, the fact that they're decomposers and we need them. They're very important and they do a very good thing that keeps life going on our planet. Um, second thing with bacteria, Again, going back to the beginning of the year when we were talking about ecology, um, bacteria can be nitrogen-fixing bacteria, where they're the only ones that can take nitrogen gas out of the atmosphere and turn it into nitrogen that living things can actually use. So some bacteria are also that as well. Now if you take a look at this picture down here, um, this is a picture of a plant's roots. Some plants have developed symbiotic relationships with nitrogen-fixing bacteria where they actually create these little nodes on their roots um, that provide a place for nitrogen-fixing bacteria to grow. So they're like little compartments, um, little communities of these nitrogen-fixing bacteria that make nitrogen for the plant. And it's all ready to go, um, and the plant can use that nitrogen right away. So what it really comes down to with bacteria is um, we need bacteria. Bacteria are actually a good thing. All right. 
how do bacteria get energy? So we know that they're alive, um, but where do they get their energy from? Are they autotrophs? Are they heterotrophs? What are they? They are very interesting. We can break them into four categories. Now we already know what autotrophs and heterotrophs are. Um, so those words are nothing new. We know autotrophs are organisms that can uh, create their own food by trapping energy from the sun or inorganic compounds. And we know heterotrophs um, are organisms that need to eat other living things in order to get their energy. So let's take a look and see what bacteria are. All right. So the four words to describe the way bacteria can get their energy, uh, the first is photoheterotroph. Now these words are going to seem a little bit intimidating, um, maybe a little bit complex, but if we slow down and we break them apart, um, it's going to help us uh, remember what each one means. So if we take a look here, photoheterotroph. Well, we know a heterotroph has to eat other living things in order to get its energy. Photo means light. So if a bacteria is a photoheterotroph, light has to eat other living things, that means the, this bacteria can do both. It can get energy from the sun to, um, um, to get energy, or it can get energy from other living things. Second category is a chemoheterotroph. Okay? A chemoheterotroph is the same thing as just a regular heterotroph. Okay? So a chemoheterotroph eats other living things in order to get its energy, so some bacteria do just that. Other bacteria can be photoautotrophs. Photoautotroph um, is an autotroph that gets its energy only from the sun. So that's a simple one too. So photo light autotroph just gets energy from the sun. And then finally the last category, um, the last group that some bacteria may fall into are chemoautotrophs. And a chemoautotroph these are autotrophs that don't get energy from the sun, but they get energy from inorganic compounds. Okay? Um, so here, the, a lot of bacteria that live near ocean floor vents um, get their energy that way. All right, so being living things, how do bacteria reproduce? Now, we learned about this again way back in the beginning of the year, where this is all references, so everything we're learning is actually coming back together now. So bacteria reproduce through binary fission. What they do is they grow bigger, they make a copy of their DNA, and then they split into two identical bacteria, each taking a copy of the DNA with them. Okay? Now this should sound very similar to you because it's very similar to mitosis. Uh, we learned about that. So um, in bacteria, we don't call this mitosis, it's called binary fission. So, and there's some slight differences as well. So the bacteria grows bigger, it makes a copy of its DNA, splits into two identical halves, each taking a copy of the DNA with it. Okay? And then each of those has the potential to reproduce in the same way. Um, now some bacteria reproduce so quickly um, that they can split every 20 minutes. So if you have one bacteria, it splits into two every 20 minutes. And then these bacteria splits into two more after 20 minutes, and so on and so on. Um, so some bacteria can reproduce very quickly. Just depends on what type of bacteria we're talking about. All right. Finally, um, genetic recombination. Um, bacteria are unique organisms. Um, there's, there's many unique things about them. Uh, one interesting thing is their ability to pick up DNA and use it. So a bacteria can actually find DNA, kind of think of it this way, just kind of laying around, and they could pick up that bacteria, take it inside, and incorporate it into their genome, where they can actually read the DNA instructions and do what it says. Um, now, by doing that, that gives bacteria new genes and it also causes mutations uh, to occur within bacteria to cause them to be different um, from the bacteria that they came from. Now, there's three ways that bacteria um, can pick up or share DNA. There's transformation, conjugation, and transduction. And we're going to learn about these three in, um, in our vocabulary. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop right there. This will be part one, and uh, we'll look at bacteria and humans in the next video.